what day we worship on. Yeah. Uh, does he get to say what days, what holy days we celebrate? Yeah, he, he really does get that authority. Uh, does he even get to say what we eat? Oh, that one hurts. Yeah. All right. Does he have the authority and the right to do that? Yeah, he does. We don't like to hear that, but he does. All right. If God doesn't have the authority to set that for you, then something else has taken his place. And you may think it's you, but it's not really you. All right. How many of y'all remember these, uh, these gospel presentations like this on tracks and things like this? You know, uh, about who's on the throne of your life. And, you know, this one is talking about self being on the throne, Christ on the outside. You know, our interests are directed by self, often resulting in discord and frustration. You know, so here we are, the self-directed life, uh, all these different things about it. Uh, and the whole picture of this is to have a Christ-directed life, a Christ-centered life. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with any of that. Uh, about how this life where he is at the throne on the throne is different from the life where self is on the throne. So I mean that's that picture that we have. Unfortunately, this is a lie. All right? It makes far too much of our own importance. And it actually feeds our ego and our pride to think that we are ever sitting here. We are not on the throne of our own life. You were never sitting on the throne. You, Because you, when you, as a sinner, you're a slave. Right? There are only two masters. There are only two options for who sits on the throne of your life. It is either God who's sitting in his rightful place, or it is who else? Who's the other option? We are the accuser. Yeah, Satan. He, he is our captor. We are in the dominion of darkness, as uh, Colossians talked about. Satan does not share the throne with you. You are under his authority. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. See, the problem with this picture is that we think, well, I'm not that bad, right? Uh, I, I, I'm at, I at least, you know, we at least will work with our, our, in our own best interests and in our own things at heart. We look out for ourselves, right? If, if we're up here, it's like, well, I'm, I'm not going to be that bad of a person. So this feeds the idea that we are in control. It feeds the idea that at least I know me, at least I can trust myself, right? But see, that, that perspective may actually delay a decision for Christ. Because me on the throne, am I scared of this? Really? Am I really scared of me on the throne of, of my life? No, I actually, a lot of people actually prefer that and like that and, and want it that way. When in reality, if God is not on the throne, if Yeshua has not redeemed you, you're still under Satan's power and under his authority. So instead of that nice, safe-looking S of self, the Prince of Darkness is actually there. And I couldn't find a picture that I really wanted to put up for you to see because it's they're just not pleasant. And that's the point. All right, You are under His authority. If we could really see that, if we could really see who sits on our throne apart from Christ, apart from Messiah, how fast would we come to Yeshua to say, Hosanna? Save now. Yeah, I think we'd be moving a whole heck of a lot faster if we could really see this. Oh, by the way, the throne of your life, this guy's sitting on it. What are you going to do about it? You want to stay there with, under his authority or do you want to be saved from that? All right? You and I were never on the throne of our life. We were never in control of our life. We were never the captain of our ship or the master of our fate, much less, much no matter how much our culture tries to tell us that we are. Sin was our master, and we were soldiers 
uh, working against God. We were enemies of God. And yet, the gospel is, while we were yet sinners, while we were, while he was still, we were still his enemy, Messiah died for us. That's the gospel. 